In a classic object-oriented programming, you have regular classes, abstract classes and interfaces. Of course, Dart has its own take on interfaces, but that's for another tutorial. Somewhere in the shadows, though, is lurking another kind of an animal. Mixins! What are they for and when should you use them? Let's find out! Hello, welcome to Reso Coder, where you are getting prepared for real app development by building better, faster, more stable apps. So subscribe and hit the bell if you want to grow your coding skills. In this tutorial, just imagine that you are building a wildlife simulation app, which needs to have, at first, a mosquito class. So you first go ahead and create a mosquito class, which will be only a simple class, mosquito, and it will have three functions actually. And mosquitoes can crawl, flutter their wings, and they can also buzz annoyingly. So your mosquito has three functions, everything is nice and good. Of course, this is currently without mixins, we are going to get to why mixins are so useful later on when we run into some limitations with our wildlife simulation apps classes. And also be sure to check out the written tutorial from the link in the description where you can also find all of the code written in this video and go through this lesson at your own pace. Alright, so these three methods of a mosquito are awesome, but then you decide, oh, mosquito has some kind of a routine which a mosquito does, so you're gonna create another new method called do mosquito thing, which will just trigger every single thing by crawling, fluttering and buzzing, and then the mosquito will suck blood. So, you have mosquito class, everything is nice and dandy. But then, as an experienced and foreseeing developer, you deem that it's correct to extract the things mosquitoes have in common with other similar insects into abstract classes. Because if you just look at this, crawling is common among every insect that there is, and then, for example, other airborne insects, like flies, can also flutter their wings and they can also buzz. So let's just extract these methods, this functionality of a mosquito, into separate classes. It's probably good to extract it into an abstract class, so insect, and this will hold crawling, because not every insect has wings, actually because some of the insects have lost their wings over time. So another abstract class will be airborne insect. And this airborne insect will, of course, can uh, flutter its wings and also buzz while it's fluttering away. And now all that's needed is that airborne insect actually extends regular insect and then also that the mosquito will extend airborne insect. And now everything works again properly. You pat yourself on the back that you do not have any code duplication in your wildlife simulation app. That's until you realize that you also want to have a swallow class, which is a bird, because something has to eat all of the mosquitoes after all. And again, there are some actions which all birds have in common. So you're not even going to create the swallow class initially, you're first going to start off with the abstract bird class. All right, so let's do just that. We're gonna create abstract bird. What can birds do? For example, they can chirp and it's just going to print out chirp chirp. But then it strikes you as you're creating your app that birds can also flutter their wings, because birds are winged creatures. But you cannot just extract the flutter method out of the airborne insect into another new class, for example, called fluttering. Why is that not possible? Well, while bird could extend the hypothetical new class, which would just contain fluttering, or flutter method actually, this would not be possible with airborne insect. Airborne insect cannot extend another class because it already extends insect. And thankfully, Dart doesn't support multiple inheritance, which is actually a good thing. And if you want to learn more about multiple inheritance, 
A link is available in the written tutorial on resocoder.com to which you can get from the link in the video description. So because Airborne Insect cannot simply extend another class, we need to duplicate the functionality inside the bird class. So there is code duplication and that is just no good. But at least now the swallow class creation is possible because uh, you can have a swallow in your wildlife simulation app. But the problem is that while doing that, you've also duplicated code. This is the reason why mixins are so useful. But first, let's just run through a quick definition from the Dart documentation. It says that a mixin is a way of reusing a class's code in multiple class hierarchies. That sentence simply said means that mixins allow you to plug in blocks of code without needing to create subclasses. It's literally as if you just took that code and plugged it, pasted it into a class. Declaring a mixin is also very simple. It's very similar to how you would declare a class. So let's do just that. Let's go up here, cut out the flutter method and above insect, let's just create a mixin called fluttering which will have the void flutter method. And now this mixing can be mixed into classes where regular or even abstract classes using the with keyword. In this case, it's probably good to mix it into the abstract classes. So airborne insect will be with fluttering. And also, in addition to airborne insect, the bird will be mixed in with fluttering. So mixins do not have the same problem as classes do, or actually it's a blessing when it comes to classes, because classes can be cast to another classes. For example, if you take the mosquito, a mosquito can be cast into airborne insect and also into an insect because it's a inheritance hierarchy. However, inheritance hierarchies just do not apply with mixins. You cannot cast an insect or airborne insect into fluttering because it's not a class, it's just a mixin. You cannot cast anything into being a mixin. So that's precisely what's so cool about mixins. And also you can have multiple mixins applied to a single class. So for example, if we create fluttering uh, two mixin, we can have with fluttering and with fluttering two. That's entirely possible. But in this wildlife simulation apps case, there is not going to be like two mixins on a single class. So we can just delete this fluttering too. This was just for the sake of demonstration purposes. The code right now is awesome. It doesn't have any duplication, but sometimes you want to prevent a mixin from being used with any kind of a class. Instead, you want to limit a mixin to be used only on a certain class or its subclass. For example, you could create another mixin which would be limited only to birds. Because as you are doing your research on wildlife, you realize that there are other birds like sparrows and blue jays. And unlike swallows, most of the other birds constantly peck something from the ground. You know, seed here, earthworm there, and so on. So you want to add a peck method, but adding a peck method directly into the bird class is not possible because not all birds peck. For example, as far as I'm concerned, a swallow does not peck anything. So because you want to have blue jays and also sparrows, you don't want to just put the peck method directly inside these two classes. So we are going to create another mixin, a mixin called pecking, which will have void peck which will just say pecking. All right, so now you go ahead and create two more classes, which will be sparrows and blue jays, which have empty class bodies because they just get all of their functionality either from the parent class or from the pecking mixin. So it's cool, right? Having the pecking mixin is much better than code duplication. But even overlooking the fact that now you can use the pecking mixin even on insect classes, which doesn't entirely make sense because insects just do not peck, but now this is entirely possible. 
which should not be possible because it's stupid. Insect cannot be pecking. But apart from that, if we overlook even this fact, there is a much bigger issue at play with this pecking mixin. That's because once you start researching the behavior of birds in their natural habitat, you come to a conclusion that after pecking something from the ground, birds just start chirping out of sheer happiness. And you already have a chirp method in the bird class. So you'd really like to reuse the functionality of the chirp method. Because while all birds can chirp, not all birds can peck. So you do not want to move it into the pecking mixing, right? And of course, not all birds can chirp because, for example, eagles do not chirp. But let's just uh, keep this simple here, right? So what you want to have here is something like chirp after pecking. But this is not possible because, of course, Dart does not know whether or not this pecking mixing will be used only on bird classes. So to fix this, just tell Dart to restrict the usage of pecking mixing only to bird classes. And by doing that, by providing the on operator and then bird, now this pecking mixing can be only used on birds and their subclasses, of course. And because it can only be used on birds and birds have a chirp method, Dart figures out, oh, you can call chirp from the pecking mixing too, because it's guaranteed to be available. So if we now go ahead and try it out in main.dart, after importing all the flying things, we just instantiate a mosquito and let it do its thing, then a swallow will do its thing, and then a sparrow will simply peck something from the ground. So let's try it out, let's run it in the console, and as expected, mosquitoes do their thing by crawling, fluttering, buzzing annoyingly, and then they suck blood, then swallows just chirp, flutter, and then they eat that freaking mosquito, and finally, sparrows start pecking something from the ground. And out of your research, you know that they should also chirp. And surely, sparrows and also blue jays will chirp. So let's just try blue jay here. They will chirp after pecking something from the ground. This whole tutorial is available for you in the written form from resocoder.com. So go there by clicking on the link in the video description and you can learn at your own pace. If you don't want to miss more tutorials like this, definitely subscribe to this channel and also join the notification squad by hitting the bell button to make sure you grow your dart and flutter skills because here on ResoCoder, I am determined to provide you with the best app development tutorials and resources out there. If this video helped you with understanding mixins in Dart, definitely give it a like and also share it with other developers who will surely benefit from it. Follow me on Instagram, I go under the name ResoCoder everywhere, leave a comment if you have anything to say, any suggestions or questions, and see you in the next video.